All right, what is up, everybody? My name is Chris, obviously, as you can tell by my name on my YouTube channel. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping by, but this, I'm basically going to talk about um, why, at least now, I'm in the process of switching to the primal diet. And for a lot of you, you probably don't know what the primal diet is. Um, I've basically only really been looking into it about four weeks. Um, I've been on it about two, two and a half weeks ish. Um, but basically, what it is <laughs> is it's pretty much eating um, raw meat. Um, yeah, basically all raw meat. Um, but more so, what I've been doing too is the raw butter, raw milk. I haven't tried raw cheese yet. Um, I have tried raw scallops, um, I had raw, well, sushi, uh, sushi is pretty straightforward, right? Um, so I have mahi-mahi, and then now I have uh, some ahi tuna steaks. Unfortunately, they were previously frozen, so they're not as good a quality. Usually you want wild caught, which they are, um, but you also want them to not be frozen at any point in the process, which I think technically the scallops were as well, because in the casing that the fish is, like in the window, it's in the metal um, containers and ends up sometimes like freezing to a certain point um, I think too just because it's like this they stay cold in there the whole time and all that stuff like that but anyways um, it's not really the point <laughs> we want to be getting into it with this but basically the point is is I haven't gotten sick off of any of this um, I don't know if it was coincidence um, with the raw milk though which is I guess I maybe have to explain that as well um, is unpasteurized milk um, so yeah, basically it's, yeah, unpasteurized, not heated to kill bacteria and things like that. And the reason why, um, you don't want, you want raw milk and you don't want it to be pasteurized is because, um, for one, if you get like whole milk, um, they actually radiate the vitamin D, um, things like they have, I think it's something called, uh, dolomite, which is like really bad. It's basically like chalk stuff that they put it into and just add and that's kind of brings us to another topic with the whole um, supplementing and things like that. Um, supplements are also really bad for you. They're toxic. Um, the waste, they're basically waste from like Pedialyte, like bigger um, vitamin companies, which their vitamins aren't even that good either. But essentially, if you get like your men's one a day is what I, I had. I've been taking it for probably about two or three years. Um, it's every day. I thought it was helping me. Uh, but supposedly it's actually waste from, it's like the leftover um, vitamins from those bigger vitamin companies and then they basically just extract it with something like casein. But anyways, I'm not really going into that uh, too much. I could probably make a whole video on that as well um, separately, uh, especially when I know more about it. Um, but basically the point is, is I've been eating, for example, like I said, the raw butter and the raw meat. That's something that um, I haven't done ground beef raw completely yet i usually just cooked outside now um for about a minute on each side is what i've been doing which sometimes depending on how much you have it can cook it a lot um which you don't really want because then you have the, also the carcinogens that are in the meat as well so yeah but yeah so this is basically what i've been um eating if you want to check it out a little bit um so this is um raw top sirloin as you can see, it's not yeah, it's not cooked like at all. It's a little bit brown like right there, which is kind of interesting. I, I kind of got to figure out why that happens. And then here's some raw butter as well, which is actually pretty good too. It's like creamy. It's almost like a creamy water. It's really weird. Like it melts in your mouth like super easy. And um, also the thing that's really good about raw meat, um, which is nice, um, because with the raw meat diet or primal diet, um, typically you don't... Um, you don't really drink as much water because you know how they say, especially if you're an athlete, like me, not necessarily an athlete, but I go to the gym five days a week, um, usually like two hours most of the time, sometimes only an hour and a hour and a half, whatever. Um, but I go pretty consistently. So I'd probably say about eight to 10 hours at the gym every week on average. Um, but yeah, so then you don't with out, um, with not really drinking as much water, um, What's good is this meat, for example, it's like 60, like 50, 60% water, whatever they say exactly. I forget exactly what it is, but when it's not cooked, 
it retains all the water because it's basically just straight off the animal, right? So if you think about it too, like humans were made out of, what did I say, like 70%? I, I don't know. I don't have all the numbers exact. This is basically just like a test run video. I'm going to be completely honest. But um, I mean, let's say the cow is 50% um, water. This meat is 50% water. Um, it's really good because then it keeps you hydrated as well, right? Because you usually when you think about it, especially like with chicken, turkey, things like that. I know for me, I always have to, usually it's cooked, right? For like Thanksgiving or whatever. Um, <clears throat> you have to drink a ton of water <laughs> all the time because it's so damn dry. But with raw meat, it's not going to be dry. So yeah, like I said, this is a 100% uh, grass-fed top sirloin from Sprouts. Um... They're pretty good, honestly. the The main thing about it, I know, I know a lot of you are probably like, "That's disgusting, bro," <laughs> which it's really not, to be honest. When you actually like think about it, because in our culture, yeah, it's nasty. But in most cultures, like sushi is pretty pretty common, right? Eating raw fish is pretty common. I know it's not for everyone either. It's mainly the texture, I think. The taste, you know, most people can probably probably get around that, especially when you have like soy sauce, things like that. Um, which also I think a lot of those you probably don't want to eat because they're bad for you or they have like a soy Soybean oil base or whatever which a lot of oils and that's the thing too with me um, a lot of oils and like what foods are cooked in especially at restaurants um, Like I know even at um, Restaurant I work at they have like soybean oil that we cook a lot of things in and soybean oil is like terrible for you um, Man anything soy and I know like this uh, beef is grass-fed as well there's um, a lot of there's a decent amount of beef that's actually soy fed too and you don't want that <laughs> that's like the worst like grain fed okay that's bad soy fed that's like absolutely no that's just straight up trash or it has tons of preservatives in it um but yeah it's really not bad it's actually pretty good and i think the main point that i wanted to get out of like with eating this is you don't have to eat as much first off so yeah it might be more expensive but your body's getting enough nutrients and when you cook the steak you're basically like I, I know a lot of people they get like their steaks well done you're pretty much getting no nutritional value out of that so if you're paying 20 bucks for that at like a restaurant or something like that it's literally a waste of money because you're getting like let's say like especially it's well done maybe let's say like 10 percent of what you would get out of eating it just straight raw and this and the reason why this is so nice is this um, this satisfies the body and the needs that you need from this food or that you need to be met or get met, or however you say it, <laughs> from this food. <laughs> but um, and that's why that's why it's so delicious. Or well, it's not okay. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's like why a lot of our society and like food is based around taste. Um, there's could be a really deep. Uh, message behind that but basically taste is a lie pretty much it's i mean obviously it exists and obviously there's a lot of bomb food out there i mean i love like ice cream like uh leather bees get like I, I can eat like 10 12 scoops of ice cream right but the thing is like that's not going to satisfy your body and yeah, it might taste really good, it might feel good in the moment, but it's like the same thing. I, I know it's kind of like a, this parable is a little bit of a reach, but it's kind of like the same thing with drugs or like alcohol. Like you have a really good time with it when you eat it, um, like the ice cream. And when you do it and it's like, it's good, maybe for like the first couple hours, but then later maybe you have like the shits or something <laughs> or you come down off the sugar high, you get diabetes, whatever, you know, I know the diabetes, that's definitely a stretch as well too, but um, yeah the point is it's just a lot more satisfying and so i guess i should get into i probably should have gotten this earlier in the video why why i'm doing the diet um so i stumbled upon it on youtube i know youtube's probably not the most credible there's a lot of good stuff on youtube though you gotta admit that right um but basically i was watching some people that were there's this one guy eating a liver uh his name is um Sferia. I, I believe is how you say it um, in his language exactly I think um, don't know exactly don't quote me on this but I think he's Norwegian um, but it's actually gonna be I guess I could like post a picture or at least his name it's, it's uh, S-V-3-R-I-G-E 
Um, he was eating uh, raw liver at a vegan campaign. And personally, there's a lot of things that he talks on there uh, besides me on like his YouTube channel that I don't agree with, um, like hardly at all. Um, I'd have to do definitely a lot more research on the other things that he talks about, but the main thing is, is when he talks about um, meat, um, high meat, things like that. Um, so, and like the whole carnivore diet and where he's inspired from, which is where all this comes from. And is definitely the person that I recommend for anyone that's um, wanting to check out this diet at all and see the credibility of it. And cause obviously you don't want to take my word or probably, uh, Sferia's, um, like word for it. Cause we're both not scientists, but someone who is, is, um, uh, what's his name is, uh, Ogenus, Ogenus Vonder Planets. Um, he actually has like a whole crazy story, um, that he went through with his life and how he changed. And actually this brings me to the next point. Because the people that essentially have saved his life to a more further degree and got him on the raw, like what he introduced to, I guess, modern society or what you want to say is the um, primal diet. And he actually went and uh, lived with Eskimos and they ended up, when he was sick one of the times, I believe they gave him fermented meat, which a lot of people say is rotten meat, whatever. It's called high meat um, for the uh, carnivorous diet. Um, like the primal diet and ended up healing him. Um, I forget exactly what he had, but basically the point is, is that he went to live with the Mes uh, Eskimos. He saw how they lived and how well they were. Um, and I, I think that that's probably the main argument. Uh, well, that's the main argument that I've been banking on with some people I've been talking with uh, about this diet at work or at like the party, last party I went to and things like that is if you think about the way that the Eskimos live, what do you think ex Eskimos mostly eat? Because they don't have veggies in their diet, right? Like for the most part. And if they do, then there's been a correlation that shows that they're actually not as healthy as the ones that don't. Like that go on a diet, like a colonial diet or like fruits and veggies and stuff like that. So, and I'm not, I'm not advocating personally, I'm not advocating to never eat fruit, never um, eat veggies ever. Um, because even Ogenus Vonder Planets and uh, Severia, they do uh, drink like some kind of like a uh, veggie squeezed juice occasionally. So for hydration and things like that, like especially if you can't get um, like raw milk, like I was telling you about is main hydration, but also like even blood um, is actually supposedly supposed to be a good hydrating, um, I guess, drink on the primal diet so but yeah the pretty much the main point is is that eskimos and a lot of other, other indigenous people have um very carnivorous uh dominating diets and a lot of them are way healthier than most people in our uh like societies like modern day societies and it kind of blows my mind that we haven't actually like done a ton of research on like the way they live and like to me it seems like it would be really important like a lot of the ways that they live yeah maybe some people would be like oh well like the way they live in their culture is a little bit more superstitious and things like that but their diet isn't something that is should really be looked over i think a lot of people just don't think about it to be honest i mean i didn't really think about it at all um if you yeah it's actually kind of crazy because I just like switching this diet and I've been doing it for two weeks and I literally have not even gotten sick off any of it. I haven't had raw pork or chicken yet though. So you can't really hold that completely against me. Um, and I haven't had the ground beef completely raw yet. I'm hoping to probably try that tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, raw milk, raw scallops, raw steak. I haven't even got sick at all. And actually, like I was going to say earlier is when I had the raw milk, um, I had a sore throat for a couple of days. I forget exactly what I got it from. I might have gotten from a restaurant that I went and ate out with my family. And I had some of the raw milk one night because I felt like I, for some reason it was kind of weird too because I had like this urge to go get raw milk and raw butter. Like it was just weird. And because like I had seen some of the guys talk about it and stuff like that. And I was kind of like, I feel like my body kind of craves that. And I'm like, you know what? Let, let's just go do it. So I went to, at night and I went and got, um, raw milk and butter from Sprouts, 
Um, it's kind of expensive, not gonna lie, but it's good for you. And um, when I drank the milk, I was like, oh, I was like really surprised that I was gonna taste completely different, but it, it basically just tastes like a better quality milk, um, like a normal 2% um, pasteurized milk. It just tastes like a better quality version of that, like more filling, um, cause it's more nutritious, obviously. <laughs> Um, and then my sore throat was gone the next day. So like I said, I don't know if that's coincidence or what, but I'm sure it probably helped cause it gave me a lot of good enzymes, um, a lot of good bacterias, uh, in my body. Cause that's, that's also something that I want to bring up is that your body's like 99% bacteria. So when you take antibodies, um, things like that, they actually, after a week of taking antibodies, they, um, kill off about 1% of your body's uh, bacteria, which is basically your body. So you're killing off pretty much a, a 1% of your body because bacteria is what makes your body function to a certain extent. Because um, bacteria can get rid of 50 times their weight of waste from your body, which your body does have a lot of waste, um, in 24 hours. And then a parasite can do 100 times its weight in 24 hours as well so yeah but that's a whole other topic that i have to uh, still have a lot of research to do for sure um but i can definitely tell you thinking about like the eskimo probably has like one of the best diets because eating fish all like raw fish all the time is almost for sure the best diet like the meat and stuff like that like the beef like the sirloin or whatever I'm eating that too, um, just for like the iron and such. Um, but the main thing that you want to on this diet, which I have not done, is eat um, liver. So liver has a lot of iron, has a lot of vitamin A. That's the, that's the main reason because usually on a carnivorous diet you need a lot of vitamin A. But for the most part, if you're eating eating any kind of beef, you're going to be getting a lot of nutrients either either way, like the vitamin A and the iron and stuff like that too. Um, and then. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much about it. I just kind of wanted to like, show you guys me eating it and stuff. Um, this video is actually kind of a little bit longer than I was hoping it would be. Um, but it is, there's a lot of things to talk about. But pretty much the point is the takeaway from this is like supplements and things. Like, I'm going to be kind of honest. Like, this diet is by nature, it just in itself what it is is it is anti-vegan it, it just is um by pretty much definition and what you eat and a lot of vegan diets um or people who are on the vegan diet they use supplements and like i said earlier in the video supplements are like really bad for you like no and you can't get like a lot of b vitamins like b uh vitamin uh b12 um the animal vitamin um, a, you can't get that from any plants at all. And there's also a lot of fa uh, fat soluble item vitamins that are in, um, in animals as well, because plants don't have fats. <laughs> like they have, well, they have fats, but they don't have the fat soluble, like the animal. Right. So, but anyways, um, I guess, yeah, I know that there's also like, um, vitamin D, I think. The D3 is what you need for like your bones and stuff, but um, I believe vegans can still get that because like with they have like D2 which gets converted to D3 because D3 is what you need. Um, but then there's also like K12 is another big one. But like I said, I haven't done like a ton of ton of research. I'm not a scientist, none of these things. So, but um, I just kind of want to share with you guys like my journey. Um, I guess I should probably talk a little bit about like my energy levels and like why it also is good like not only is the diet like super nutritious um it's obviously easier for your body to di digest this over a cooked food um and you get more way more nutrients out of it um i guess if you want to hear the the argument of um you know how like a chimpanzee is like 98 99 percent the same dna as like a human being right um, but the difference is, is even though they do eat plants and stuff like that too, they also, pretty much every animal eats meat no matter what, like cow, I don't care what it is, like anything, they will eat meat products or like animal products that, um, like, I mean, I guess I, like, I wouldn't even say it's in a starving state, but maybe, 
maybe some of them it is uh, like a giraffe or something right but every, pretty much every animal eats meat but the main difference between us and primates is that primates actually have the ability to ferment um plant uh like plant products or byproducts whatever basically what the plant is whereas for humans since our small intestine because our small intestine is actually a lot bigger than any other like in any other primate and if you think about it too like we're a first off we're a apex predators and apex predators are like lions eagles wolves bears and and what do pretty much all those eat they all eat meat like they never eat <laughs> like they never eat veggies like they maybe do occasionally like or fruits like probably a bear does eat like berries or something like that right but for the most part they're they're hunting right they're they're hunters hyenas which i know people probably be use the argument of like oh well hyenas are like scavengers well people most likely back in the days were scavengers as well like yeah we're an apex predator too but at some point in the beginning we were probably scavengers also though which i mean you even have that with um like the native americans they have high meat other indigenous groups which is the fermented meat that i was talking about and they'll leave like an animal in the ground for like a year or whatever and they'll come back and they'll eat the meat and it's like it doesn't matter if it's a deer a bear or a bird whatever some kind of bird um like i don't know like a freaking penguin or something <laughs> probably i don't really know about penguins too much but um i've heard much on that but um yeah so um i think that's pretty much about it <laughs> i want to talk about yeah i just kind of wanted to give a rundown of like changing my diet and kind of why i'm doing it like i said the large or the small intestine our small small intestine is pretty big and that's where we absorb most of the nutrients and it's like super easy for us to absorb the nutrients from meat so why cook it when those carcinogens which are bad for your body and oh that's another big thing that i want to bring up is wheat like wheat products and well pasta i mean wheat products basically any kind of breads pasta like i think i saw a video like a title of a video and the um, thumbnail had like this pasta that was like five days old or something and this kid ate it and then like it was terrible like in their body like a doctor had to go out and cut it out but basically yeah supplements poisonous wheat products also very poisonous like so bad for your body and the fiber in a diet you actually don't even want like that much fiber that's why like the guys that do um the juicing they juice for um like a veggie juice for hydration and then like some fruit like maybe like some uh, tangerines or something like that in there just to like kind of cancel out the bitterness and for um, some of the sugars but for the hydration as well um, but they they with their juicers though they get all like pretty much all of the um, plant product out which is like the fiber basically like the leftover plant part because your body doesn't digest it and there's a lot of time that it just like sits in your uh, large intestine which is also like bad for your body too and and also, typically diets, like, they say, like, oh, if you're having constipation, eat more fiber. It's literally exactly the opposite. The more fiber that you eat, there's a higher chance that you have a worse diet. And also, like, like I want to be clear. I'm not talking about this carnivorous diet. Like, it's called, that's why I call it a primal diet, probably. This carnivorous diet is more based around eating wild, like, animals, like fish mainly, and then eating, like, cows and chickens that are raised properly um, and pigs off like proper food mainly with the beef uh, is more what I know about that's 100% grass fed and you can get it from like an Amish farmer or something like that or like a straight up farmer that has them out grazing too not like locked up in a barn because a lot of times they'll be like oh it's 100% grass fed which I think this meat is but all the cows are locked up in a barn and they go out and just like cut the grass and they bring it to the cow in the barn and maybe the grass is even grown with like the best stuff as well too so there is that but anyways guys i'm gonna wrap this up because it's almost 25 minutes i uh, appreciate you guys uh checking video out uh, hearing me out and i hope that um you guys can maybe do a little bit of research or i can bring some more research to you guys and keep you updated throughout the uh next probably rest of my life so anyways Peace out, guys.